This is a story of Dr. Bill Franklin, a man who survived a pandemic, not the one we've been thinking about at the moment, but the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, which killed off more people than died in the First World War, and indeed more people than died of the Black Death, bubonic plague. He had numerous other scrapes with death along the way. He was born prematurely, weighed three pounds, which 100 years or so ago was not good news. He had a bovine tuberculosis when he was a kid. He went through the Second World War as a Japanese prisoner of war, uh, which meant he was very badly treated, uh, very nearly died a couple of times, came back and um, entered the world of allergy. And that nearly killed him because he uh, was bitten by an insect as part of his research, which caused him to have a major anaphylactic reaction um, and he came very close to popping his clogs at that stage. His big interest was hay fever and I interviewed him some years ago to talk about desensitisation, this idea that you can get the body to accept allergens that hitherto have caused you problems. And I met him at his beloved St Mary's Hospital, so let's start there. In 1911, at St Mary's Hospital Paddington, the treatment of hay fever patients with a grass pollen extract was first started by Dr Noon. In 1913, Dr Freeman took over this work, which has continued ever since in the allergy department at St Mary's. Dr John Freeman set up a pollinarium to provide vaccine for desensitising injections. Selected plants were carefully cultivated and harvested. Then the refined pollen was taken by car to St Mary's, on this occasion by Dr William Franklin. I went to see him to find out what happened once the vaccine was prepared. Well, patients who were allergic to grass pollen were taught how to give themselves their own desensitizing injections. There were so many to give, so Dr. Freeman had the idea, let's make the patients give themselves their own injections. And there's, this is a sort of standard set that we used to push out. And were they bothered by infections or...? No, we had no problem from infections. If they had a reaction, which sometimes they did, they had their own adrenaline, which they could give themselves. There's the bottle of adrenaline. Uh, that's the emergency treatment for acute anaphylaxis or any nasty reaction. It's unopened, so I presume yeah. that uh, yeah. particular patient was all right. Did you have any problems with the patients who were given these injections? Well, some of them had reactions. We certainly had no deaths, and we, we treated thousands and thousands of patients, and we never had any real problems from this. But, of course, we were making them in those days give themselves 54 injections, that's pre-seasonally, so that was one a day, or maybe one every other day, depending what time they started, because you finished the injections just before the pollen came in the air. So these desensitizing injections preceded the first antihistamine by, by some 30 or so years? Uh, yes, yes. Now there must have been a lot going on at Mary's at about that time, because there was work taking place on allergies and on antibiotics. Yes, antibiotics I suppose started in 1928 with the contamination of Fleming's plate by a penicillium mould. And he was working in a laboratory uh, just above the allergy department, as it then was. Uh, and you can see by the, the blue plaque in Prade Street where penicillin was discovered. It didn't fly in from Prade Street, it flew in from the open door, uh, the penicillin mould, that is, from the allergy department downstairs. Which, and in fact, the allergy department contaminated many laboratories at that time. So the allergists were, in a way, responsible for the advent of penicillin? They were indirectly, uh, or you could say directly responsible for the beginning of the antibiotic era, yeah. Early in his career, Dr Franklin met Sir Henry Dale, the man who first described the action of histamine in 1911. Later, of course, it became clear that most histamine is contained in granules in the body's mast cells, which are also receptor sites for IgE molecules. 
and that when an allergen interacts with the IgE, it triggers changes in the cell resulting in degranulation and the release of histamine and other mediators. So that's it, Bill Franklin, an amazing man who carried on working long after he got his telegram from the Queen, such was his love of his vocation. He's someone who thoroughly deserved his reputation as one of the greats of the world of medicine.